Well, hello YouTube. There's lots of videos out there about embedded systems, processors, companies, etc. But none seem to go completely through the process of what is it you're trying to make? What is the processor choice? How will you get that designed? What are the piece parts that have to be put together? And how do you actually do all those things? How do you debug, etc.? So what I want to do is I want to put together, from start to finish, very simple projects and maybe going more and more complex, including displays and different kinds of sensors and things like that. So hopefully this is a start of a number of videos that you can take a look at to get insight into the world of embedded systems. Come along for the ride. Okay, so to start with, we're going to start with the simplest possible project we can ever do. And that's just reading data from an analog pen and duplicating that data on an analog output. We'll keep this very simple. There's lots of things to go through. Okay, so there's all kinds of processors that we could choose for this small tiny processors. We only have two I.O. pins that we're using. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to pick a processor that has a little more capability than we need. This way we can do several projects with that processor. So I'm going to start with STM32 F429 and if you see Discovery 1, that's the one I'm going to pick. If you see Discovery Zero, that's actually the older board, and I don't think you really want to start with that. So this is a very good price right here. I mean, you can't go wrong with that price. It has a little display on it, which is a very small processor, memory, the whole thing ready to go. Even has, you know, other little parts on it that we may play with later. Um, I'll put a link in the video for this, but the primary thing is this is going to be the beginning point. We'll go through several projects with this processor, but the reason for the choice of this is most embedded processors give you example programs, which is nice, that's great, but if they don't have an example program for the example you want, for the processor you want, then you're going to be doing a lot of work trying to put the pieces together. What's nice about the ST Microelectronics is they provide examples, but they also provide a tool that can generate infrastructure for you. And that's what I think is going to be most important to get developers up and running quickly into their, you know, coding their first uh, tasks and the work that they have to get done. Now that I have made the choice of using ST Micro. There's some tools from ST Micro which are pretty powerful actually. The first tool that I'd like to talk about is STM32 Cube MX. This tool comes for free from ST Micro Electronics. They also even provide an IDE and they even recently have purchased True Studio, which is a professional uh, commercial IDE which they now are providing free to um, their clients. That's you and me. What's interesting though about that tool is it only runs on Windows, so if you have a Mac or Linux then you won't be able to use it, but the free tool ID that comes from them, it runs on Mac, it runs on Linux, it runs on Windows. And so right now I think what we'll, we'll go through is we'll go through creating a project for the processor that I've made a choice of. So when you select new project, you get the new project window and from the new project window, we can type in our processor. And we should get a list of those different processors here. So these are all the possible candidates. There's various configurations, 
chip sizes, package sizes, etc. I'm giving you unit prices as well, as well, but those prices are in, in 10k unit volumes. Instead, what I'm going to do is, since I'm using the development board, I'm actually going to choose board selector. And then I'm going to type in my processor. And hopefully, if everything goes well, it didn't show up. There we go. So here's the processor board. Okay, now I'm ready to start the project. This is interesting here because it's going to ask me, do you want to initialize all the peripherals? I'm just going to say yes. Thank you for initializing everything for me for free. I'm very happy to have that done for me. Now it brings up our project window and it's showing our processor. You can see that some of the pins are green, some are yellow, some are gray. The ones that are yellow, light yellow, are obviously used by um, the board for power, ground, reference voltages, etc. The green are pins that are programmed by this setup. And then we do have some other pins that are not not available for certain functions as with all embedded systems each pin has multiple functions and this has been programmed for the development board we're talking about so i'm not going to go over all the details of this maybe i will in a later video when i talk about specific aspects of this but for now just let's take a look over here on the side so you can see that some are uh, um, in green. This means they're in use. If you put your mouse over it, it'll tell you what the use is. Some of them are not available. Some of them are partially used. But let's just say that everything here uh, works good for the board that has been chosen. And of course, the one that uses up the most pins is going to be the um, TFT controller, which uses probably about probably close to about 25, 26 pins off of this processor. Um, we do want to have an ADC in use. So now I want to pick um, an input. Uh, analog to digital input. Now all of these in red, they're used. But right here we have one pin in five and take a look right down here where this gray one is. Let's see if that's the one we get. Yeah, so that's the one we get. Now we can select external triggering for this. We're not going to do that because we're going to read it directly. So we're going to read the input and then write it to the output. So we don't need to do that. Okay, now the real interesting part. So I picked my ADC on this pin, which turned out to be PA5 right here. I come down to the DAC where I want to, and look, it's, it's already in use. So I'll take a look at DAC, I'll put my mouse pointer over. Um, look at PA5 is in use. So I'm going to move this from 5 to 13. You'll see that pin pop up here. Okay, so my ADC is here now, and now I have a free output to configure. So now PA5 is now the DAC output. And notice that the N5 over here is now red in red, which means I can't use it anymore. So with a little bit of work back and forth, I was able to select pins uh, correctly. This is very important because you need to sit down with your hardware engineers, make sure that everything uh, lines up correctly. So we're now ready to generate code. But before we generate code, 
and take a look at the clock configuration. If there's anything on this page that's red, which thankfully, thankfully it's not, but if there's anything on this page that's red, then it's going to be necessary to resolve that, that red. Um, the next step is configurations. So I'm not going to do any configuration here at all at this time. I'll show you those in other videos. There's all kinds of control that you can, can make use of here. We can put in our tosses. We can add the fat file system if we have um, those, that piece of hardware. We can, if you've got Ethernet, you can add that. There's all kinds of stuff that you can add to middleware. So for right now, no operating system. We're just going to go essentially bare bones and generate some code. Okay. So we just come to project, generate code. If you've run this for the first time, it's going to ask you for um, a location to put it. It's probably not good to put it in the... Uh, um, main main drive so put it in a location and now you pick your ide so i did talk earlier about the ide that comes for free from stm and that's this sw4 stm32 and then they're also giving away true studio um, which was uh, i think it was like about 1600 dollars. so it's actually great that they're giving it away because they want you to choose their tools and of course there's you know, other other tool chains. I think IAR, Keel, and those kind of things can be selected. Um, but I'm going to use this because I have a Mac and I can't use True Studio. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to take all the rest of the defaults just as they are. Uh, later on, we may increase the numbers for stack and heat, but for right now, we don't need to do that. So I'll press OK. It's dependent on some firmware. So we it's quite possible you have to download something. If you've never worked with this chip before, you may have to download. So that process can take quite a while. After the generation is complete, and I didn't show you the whole download and everything that happened, because I've never used this processor before with the tool, I had to download some software, which is all the libraries and drivers and pieces that are needed for this processor. That was about 400 megabytes and took a little while to download on my internet. So anyways, we're now at the point where it has created the infrastructure, the code for everything that's here. Now, if you have an installed IDE and if this is appropriately configured, you can just press open project and it'll open up your IDE. Otherwise, we're just going to use open folder just because I want to quickly show you that there's been some generated code. So we have, of course, the load file, startup code, so we should see a .s file here. Here's all the source code. There's our main. That is the main uh, piece of software we're going to take a look at after uh, this portion. But basically, you start to see things related to the hardware USB, and then we're also going to find drivers. So there's drivers from STM and drivers from the CMSIS. And here we're basically going to find drivers, which basically are for every part. In here, every single driver has basically how to send, how to receive, how to initialize, how to uninitialize, those kind of functionality or those kind of functions are available inside of each one of these. I'll get to that in a later video, but right now just want to just give you a sort of a layout, show you where things are at uh, within the software here, and then um, um, we have virtually no middleware because we didn't select anything, so we only have USB host. I won't get into that detail, it's just a little complex for this video. So this is what it looks like. So now what I want to do is I want to bring in the editor and this is essentially it's Eclipse. That's what most editors are. Um, nothing's available here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that uh, project up from the file system. 
Uh, hopefully we just choose the documents and it shows that there is <clears throat> a project right here. That's my project. I'm not going to make any other changes at this point because uh, I'm not going to use uh, configuration management or anything like that. Hopefully it'll bring it in with no errors and we have a project. Look familiar? Um, let's take a look at the main really quick. And in the main, we, you will find all of the uh, generated code. This Here's all the, pr the prototype functions that will be called within an in, and there's main. It starts off, <coughs> initializes everything, and goes into a while loop. This is just a big loop uh, software, and the reason is pretty simple. I didn't add an operating system, and it's all just going to stay within main. As soon as we exit main, the whole thing just sort of stops running, which is not what we want. So the next step is going to be, and we'll do that in another video, which is to begin to fill in pieces of the puzzle here for that project, which is, for this project, which is just to uh, uh, read from a DAC, uh, read from an ADC and write out to a DAC. Okay, so that'll be it for now. Um, I'll leave links down below for the board, uh, other options for the board, and for um, uh, where you can find these tools that we're talking about. There's other videos on the YouTube for how you install these tools. If people ask for it, I'll, I'll do it again because um, there's a video for Windows. I don't know if there's a video for Mac, and I don't know if there's a video for Linux. There may be, but... I just don't know. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll keep going.